Hello and welcome to the fifth part of the tutorial series. Um, now we will make a little puddle and I will also show you how you can manually place an object that is attached to the ground so that if you make changes on the terrain the object will follow. For the puddle we just add a new plane first and then scale it up a bit like 10 times and now we have to look where uh, a good position could be so yeah i guess here it's pretty good um well now we go to the shader editor and click on new call this water and now we can also go to the viewport shading and first of all we need a mix color node we connect the result to the base color and then we need a color ramp We connect the color to the factor and an ambient occlusion node which we will connect to the factor. Okay, we click on uh, only local and for the distance uh, we set uh, 500. Okay, then we also need a normal map node, a noise texture, and we connect the yeah the color to the color and the normal to the normal. And now we can just press Ctrl and T if we have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled so that we get our mapping nodes here. Okay. For the noise texture, we can set it to 4D. And yeah, now we can scale it up to yeah maybe 100 120 okay um now we also have to change the metallic value to something like 0.8 then specular also and the roughness we have to make very low, so I would say 0 0.05. Okay. And now we set the uh, strength of the uh, normal map to 0 0.01 maybe. Okay. And the cool thing is we can also animate the noise texture so that we have movement in the water. We just have to click on the W value and then type hashtag uh, frame slash and 100 maybe. And as you can see, if we press on play, we have a little movement in the water. Now we go to the render preview. And then we change the first color to a darker green tone. And now we have to flip the color ramp. And then we can change the mix of the colors with the uh, white um, color slider. So I 
used a value of 0.88 here. All right, perfect. Now we can also rename our object to puddle, make a new collection, also call this puddle. And now it's quite nice. But what are we doing if we don't want to have anything scattered where the water is? For that, we would first have to cut out only the visible part of the water and then extrude it a bit to get a solid mesh. And after that, we could use the proximity function of gscatter again. So let's go. We first have to go to the geometry node editor again, then click on new. Then we first would need a set position node, then uh, an extrude mesh node, then a mesh boolean node, and also an object info node. Uh, we connect the geometry to mesh2 and here we can set the offset scale um, to zero for now. Then we select our terrain and set it to relative. And as you can see, we have procedurally cut out only the visible part of the plane with our uh, mesh boolean node. And now we also have to extrude it a bit. Um, so I would set it to 0.1 and we want it downwards. So here we set it to minus 0.1 and here we go. Now we open gscatter again. So we go to the end panel. We make this window a bit smaller. Then we go to gscatter and we can start with the rocks. And here we add another proximity effect layer. And as the object, we choose our puddle. And as you can see, the stones are disappeared. And I would also suggest to deactivate use pivots only. So it's a bit more precise. And yeah, here you go. Now you can do it for the other assets as well. And then you have finished the puddle. And keep in mind that you can also change the name of the effect layers. So we can call this one puddle proximity, for example. And then if we apply it on the other systems, it's more easy to find. So it would be this one. Um, I don't apply it on the trees and on the branches because I think it looks quite nice here, but I applied it on all the grass assets. And I would suggest to set the distance multiplier of the puddle proximity to zero so that the grass and the other assets really grow till the water. Now we will also manually place a tree stump, which will be attached to the ground, just to show you how it works. So let's go to Polyheaven again, and under Nature, I selected this tree stump. Then go to File again, Append, search for the folder, select the blend file, Collection, and Append the collection. Here we can also rename it to just tree stump. All right. Now we can scale it up a bit. And yes, now we have to look where we can place it. So maybe here it's good. Um, 
keep in mind, we will um, attach the stump uh, with a shrink wrap modifier to the ground. So the stump always has to be above the terrain. Um, we can also make it a bit higher. And now we go to the constraints and then select our shrink wrap modifier. And as the target, we choose the terrain. And with the distance, we can make a bit fine tuning. We could also rotate it. All right. Just to show you, if we open another window with the geometry node editor and select our terrain, And then I change the scaling, for example, of the hills. As you can see, the uh, stump goes with the terrain. So thanks for watching and I hope I see you in the next chapter.